Exam season is almost upon us, and I'm here as a 3L law student to tell you what you need to know about studying for law school exams. First things first, I've said it before and I'll say it again, law school exams are incredibly important when it comes to your grades for law school. In most classes, and especially your first year, your final exam accounts for 100% of your grade for that class. And in a school where you typically only have three to four classes per semester, again, especially in that first year, you really wanna make sure that you are maximizing every chance you can to get a high score on your exams. I wanna preface everything I'm about to say with this is what has worked for me to achieve a slightly above average score in my classes at WashU. That's usually something in the range of B plus to A minus. If you are trying to be a top five or 10% law student, that's awesome. I am not gonna sit here and lie to you and pretend that I know how to do that because I don't, and frankly, for the goals that I have in my own career, that just wasn't necessary. So these tips may help you, but they also might not be enough to achieve what you are looking for in your law school experience. For those of you like me wanting to emphasize a work-life balance during your time in law school and going after jobs that are competitive but not cutthroat, I hope that this can help. First, figure out what study strategy works best for you. Try going to office hours, outlining, doing practice exams, watching additional lectures through something like Barbary and studying supplements. These are all very different methods of studying, some of which work better for different individuals than others. Personally, I have found that outlining with a partner is the best way for me to actually go through all of the material and think critically about it. Whenever I have a question, I have another person that I can bounce those ideas off of. And then at the end of the semester, any remaining questions we have as a pair or as a group, we can go to the professor for before the exam. I'm only in one class this semester and <laughs> God willing, this is the last law school class that I will ever be taking. This is for corporations, a class that definitely does not come to me naturally. And so I've done my absolute best to maximize my chance of success on this exam by starting the outline early. Now I've definitely heard advice out there that you should start your outline the very first week. And it's true in a sense that it's never too early to start reviewing your notes, but I don't think there's any real point to starting your actual outline that you're going to use to study for the exam and maybe even during the exam if it's open book before the halfway point of the semester. And that's because the whole point of an outline is to combine all of your notes into one document, ideally with another person, and supplemented with material that you have found outside of class that help you understand what the professor was trying to teach you, and do it in a way that makes all of those notes make sense together in one context. Before the halfway point, you really just don't know what the direction of the class is yet. You aren't sure which concepts are ultimately going to be foundational and easy ones and which ones are going to be supplementary, not as important, or far more difficult. You might be able to make some reasonable inferences given on when things fall in the semester, but really I would say that the halfway point of the semester is a good time to go back to the very first class, the very first reading assignments, and start typing up those notes with the benefit of hindsight. So when you look at a case that you read for class and discussed at the time, instead of writing word for word what you wrote a month and a half ago, think about what concepts from that case you have continued to talk about throughout the semester and emphasize that in your outline. Only include facts that are extremely relevant to the reasoning of the holding that the case stands for and is known for. You don't need to know every single party name and the history of an appeal process that just usually isn't really relevant. A corporation's case is usually pretty long. It has not been rare at all for them to be 30 or 40 pages of dense single spaced text. And ideally my bullet points for each of those cases in my outline don't go more than five or six. I think the longest brief of a case that I've included in a final outline was half a page of text. And honestly, that was still pretty long. In a perfect world, I would get four or five cases on one page typed. So my partner for corporations and I just 
two days ago this week uh, finished our outline and we actually were fortunate enough in our pacing throughout the semester meeting once or twice a week for about two hours or so um, typing it through and talking about the concepts uh, we finished on the day of the final class that is going to be tested on the final I don't think I really said that very well, but the point is that we only have one week left of classes, and that last week our professor very kindly informed us would not uh, include any material that's going to be on the exam. So we finished typing up our outline with the class notes that we had just taken. So now for the next two weeks until the final exam, we can focus on condensing the outline even more. Right now it's about 30 or so pages, which I'd say for me is pretty average. And it would be great if we could pare it down to be like 25. Then from there, I at least will create what's called an attack outline, which is a one to two page document that just has the concepts that you might look for on an issue spotter. You can probably infer this from the fact that I'm converting something that's 35 pages to one to two pages, but you basically want to ignore all the case names, ignore all the definitions, ignore all the facts. You literally just want phrases and single word concepts. So when you're going through an exam problem and looking for things to talk about that are related to the class, you can go through and say, for example, okay, um, what standard of review is this going to be? Is it going to be business judgment rule, uh, entire fairness rule, or whatever the other standards are in corporations? Those are the two off the top of my head. I obviously have not done this part of the studying yet. The creation of the full outline, the 30 to 35 page document, is really helpful because it kind of reminds you of everything that you talked about in class, but the attack outline really helps you narrow in on the issues that you are specifically trying to include in your answers on the exam. The more of those issues you can spot, the more opportunity for points that you have, and the better your chances are to be on the you know, higher end of the law school curve. I have a whole other video about the curve and grades, which I would definitely recommend you check out as a supplement to this one, but today we are just talking about exams. I also mentioned earlier things like practice exams. I really highly recommend those, especially if you can get practice answers from the professor or prior students who did well in the class. I think it's really useful to take a question, do your very best on it in a timed setting and compare your answer to one that did really well. There's always a level of a right answer, but there's never gonna be something that's word for word perfect that just like can't exist with the nature of issue spotters, but you definitely want to talk about all of the issues that the professor thought about and ideally think about some of your own that maybe the professor didn't even catch as they were writing the question. The best way to do that is by practicing. If there are concepts that you just really had a hard time understanding, you've gone to the professor, they explain it the same way that they did in class and it's just not clicking for you, a good way to try to get another perspective on those issues and maybe understand them a little bit better is by reading and watching supplementary materials. These usually do cost money, but there are lots of ways to find them for free. For example, your 1L year, Barbary gives you free prep classes. There are lectures that will help you with those classes. After after the fact, once you sign up for a bar program, sometimes programs, again, like Barbary, will give you lectures to help with your classes as well. I would always try to befriend students that are older than you that have taken the classes before you did because they may have also purchased supplementary materials. I was actually just complaining to my friend the other day who had graduated two years ago from my school about corporations and he's like, oh wait, I have a corporation supplement that you could borrow. So I have it actually sitting just right over there and next week I'm gonna dig into it to try to just get another perspective on the issues that I don't totally get yet. One last tip relating to older students or students that have taken the class before you that I'd like to share are their outlines. Please, please make your own outline or a version of it, even if it's something like a mind map, which is what I did my first year. Making the outline is a very common and effective way to study, even if you can't use the outline itself on the test. But having a prior student's outline to compare yours with can help show gaps in your understanding and in your note-taking. 
It also is another way to just get a really good different perspective on the same comments that you're trying to understand as well as possible before taking the test. A lot of schools put together something called an outline bank where former students can upload any outlines that they made for their classes and you can get it from those or you can just ask people that you're friends with. I'm sure there are worse ways to meet new people than asking them for their outlines. Another important aspect of exams is making sure that your computer or whatever supplies you're using to take the exam are up to date, ready to go so that you don't have to worry about anything outside of your control that day. You wanna make sure that you are well rested. That's very important that you've eaten beforehand, you've gone to the bathroom. Usually you're only gonna get three to four hours to take an exam and you really don't wanna have a situation like I did where you take a snack break in the middle of those three hours and strain your jaw eating a cliff bar. If you wanna hear that whole story, uh, you can click this video of my horror stories right up there. At the end of the day, law school exams do matter, but there is a lot that you can do until the day of the exam to best prepare yourself. And once the exam is over, just feel free to forget everything, let it go. There's nothing you can do when it's out of your hands. Going forward, you can always learn from the exams. You can review anything that the professor had to say. A lot of professors are willing to meet with students and if an exam had a multiple choice section, there usually is some kind of key that they'll let you look at uh, under supervision, of course, after the fact. Try your very best not to stress too much about it. There are lots of really good lawyers who didn't do great in law school and lots of lawyers who got their dream job despite one or two bad grades. So do your best. I hope these tips help. If you are a law student and you have others that you would like to share, make sure that you drop those tips in the comment box below. I will see you guys next week with another video and until then, God bless.